So today we're going to be looking at Apple... I'm sorry! My throat's a bit weird. Today we're going to be looking at Apple's Nest shaders. Um, so uh, a few streams ago we took a quick look at how that worked. Also, I am frozen because I am silly and haven't turned on my tracking. Let me try that again. Ah, uh, 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 that's better. Uh, hello everyone! <laughs> Um, sorry about that. That's what happens when you're not paying attention. Um, all right, let's try it again. Hello, everyone. It's Aileen here. And so we're going to be looking at mesh shaders. Um, so last time we, um, not last time, a few streams ago, we took a quick look at how that, um, looked like it worked. Um, and so today we're going to see if we can figure out all the details. Um, so the goal is, um, not to implement it. Um, we're actually going to be looking at implementing this, like, several months in the future um because um i mean it's it's a long story i'll tell you along the way but basically the goal today is to figure out how it would eventually look to implement so that um when we have um sort of um temporary uh implementations that are simpler we are working towards the you know the final version that would work like this so um so basically today is all about understanding what to expect and how things work and then we will see about implementing it some other day. <laughs> All right. Um, don't worry, you didn't miss much other than me being frozen. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Let's see. Hello, Yuri. Hello, Glaze. Hello, Alexander Waters. Hello, Darian's Flame. Hello, Skin. Hello, Absolute Stratus. Hello, Kana. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you here. Uh, hello, Winded Dragon. Hello, Spargas. Hello, Dad Dang. Hello. Um, I think that's everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, oh, also, I am, like, bigger than usual because I forgot I messed with my, um, let's see if this works. Yes, okay. Um, because I was, I was doing some recording and I changed the, the positioning, so that should be fine now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things going wrong today. <laughs> That's not yet for not testing. Um, should be fine, though. Please don't stay up too late. <laughs> Alright, um, <laughs> I am such a derp. Okay, um, so, yeah, that's the plan. Is the difference between fragment shaders and mesh shaders? Yes, they are completely opposite. Um, mesh shaders are, I, I actually, to be honest, I'm not that familiar with the, like, details of programming mesh shaders because I don't actually do a lot of graphics programming. <laughs> But basically, mesh shaders are a way of generating vertices. So it actually goes before the vertex shader. Um, so it's, it has nothing to do with fragments. It's all about generating the triangle mesh that is going to be rendered. And so the idea is that um, you basically generate a subset of the mesh. I think it's called the meshlet. And there are actually two shaders. There's like a control shader or something. I don't know. It's... Honestly, I don't actually know about the programming model very much. But that's actually not what we're going to look at today. What we're going to look at um, today is that mesh shaders actually don't exist in the hardware. There's no, um, there's no, um, like, hardware support for running mesh shaders like this. Um, in th the Apple GPUs just have regular vertex shaders. So the way mesh shaders work is actually they are emulated using compute shaders. And so they have to write the output to temporary memory. And that's the interesting part because there is a dynamic memory allocation mechanism that was introduced with macOS Ventura with 13.0. So that's new in Metal 3, I think. And that's where the mesh shader stuff came along. And, um, and so that's how that works. And we need to look into the details of how the allocation is called and how it um, how it is signaled from a shader, whether that, um, like, returns the execution to the shader or something else. Um, so I, from last time when we looked at this, we know there's, um, definitely memory allocations happening, which we expected. And there is a signal from the firmware to the driver that tells it when it needs to allocate memory for the temporary mesh output. And there's a signal back from the driver to the firmware to continue execution. And there are at least two compute shaders involved. Um, but we haven't looked at the data structures used to coordinate this memory allocation with the firmware and the shader. And we haven't looked at the shader code itself and how it calls this memory allocation stuff. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, so not, not so much the 
um, actual like mesh part of the mesh shaders because that's more of a implementation detail and um, and it's going to be different between um, like metal and um, you know Vulcan and all that. So we don't actually really care about how metal implements the details of mesh shading. What we care about are the primitives that the hardware and firmware gives us so we can implement these things and then we can do whatever we want with them. So that's that's the plan. Um Tristan, you could write a graphics pipeline, write a vertex shader which possesses each vertex. And you're on the fragment shader, yep. And so for, for mesh shading you are processing multiple um, vertices and generating multiple polygons at once in a shader. Is my understanding. Um, and so then there's the like two shaders involved to coordinate that process. Alright, let me see if I can make sense of this. One second. And drink some tea. Also, yeah, I have my coffee here. I still haven't had my coffee. It's a different name for a geometry shader. It's It replaces geometry shaders. Um, it is a more constrained version of geometry shaders that is more efficient, I think. Um, so metal doesn't have geometry shaders, um, which are a bit of an... Like, basically, geometry shaders are not very well designed. Um, because it's kind of, mm -hmm, like, basically the, the way they were, um, designed makes it hard to implement them both in hardware and in software. So, um, mesh shaders are a newer approach to that kind of thing. Um, that is, you know, better designed, hopefully. So, I'm gonna have a bit of coffee and we'll get started. Yeah, listen to Dragon Spring, they know what they're talking about. Alright, um, so let me make sure we are all set on my... Oh gosh, I still have the terrible hack here for... <laughs> I had to delete this. Um, I, I th Actually, yeah, last stream... Oh, by the way, we didn't have a stream on Wednesday, because is... this week has been a bit crazy. Um, but last time we had a stream on Friday, we ended with, um, it was a Terminal Emulator that had weird textures. Turns out that is a bug in the Terminal Emulator. Um, I found right after the stream that there was another texture that was corrupted. And looking at the API trace, it's coming straight from the app, so, yeah, not a driver bug. Um, alright, so let me just make sure that everything here is... All set, and we'll get started. I think we're good. All right, let's go. So, uh, first, let's look at the trays we took um, last time. A few, um, a few streams ago. So, mini proxy client graphics logs. Um, so, I have a sim link here, mesh that log. Um, so, this is where we were last time. Uh, why is it working with other drivers, do you think? It works with software rendering, but it doesn't work with software rendering with the same API trace. So that means that with software rendering, the app runs a different path um, that, um, like, gener you know, basically runs different code and it works. But if we, if I, I took an API trace of the emulator and I ran that under the software renderer and that didn't work. So when you run the whole app under software rendering because the versions supported and the features supported are different, Somehow it works because the app does something different. Um, but when you do the same set of operations that the app does on Apple, on our driver, on the software render, it also doesn't work. So that proves that it's the app doing something weird and not us. Um, so let's see if we can find the compute stuff. So here is one compute launch. Okay, yeah, so this is, um, no, that's just a flag. Hold on. I get something else. So here's one. Let's see if I can find the one we're talking about. This one, yes. So, um, here I think is where the, 
uh, mesh rendering starts in the old tray. So what we have here is we have a compute um, submission. And all of this is not all compute stuff. But the interesting thing is this one. Um, there is a new pointer in the command um, queue structure. So actually, let's make some notes of these pointers. Um, so we can... Um, I just key right for that. And then paste it in the other. So let's make some notes of these pointers. So we have compute submission number one. And then in the command queue info, we have that pointer. That pointer is important. Um, then we have this unknown work command. So that is something we don't know what it does. It's work command um, 10 or A. And it seems to just have the um, stamp value as an argument. So if we look at the... If we look at the stamp value here, you can see it is the same. So this is the, um, the new stamp value for the work command. I don't know what this does. It has to do with this mesh rendering stuff, but um, I have no idea what it really does right now. Hello, konnichiwa! Um, so we have a command we don't know about, but it doesn't really have any arguments. I think everything else was zero. Um, I might want to double check that, but um, I think the only argument was that. Then we have the actual compute submission. That is all mostly normal, but we have some extra pointers lying around. So start compute doesn't have any extra pointers. Um, those are things we already know about. But finalize compute has some stuff here. So there is a pointer there in finalize compute. And that pointer is just to write it out properly. Um, eight zero and then two more zero. So that pointer is that, which is different. Um, and then we have um, all this is the same, but then we have these at the end of the command buffer. So here we have two pointers. Uh, one is the same. No, not the same. Yes, one is the same as this one. The second one, C4. No, it's not. Sorry. Same as this one. It's the second one. Um, and the other one is A0 15800000. So yet another pointer there we don't know about. So mesh shaders are from um, generating meshes in the GPU. If you're just rendering a mesh that is already generated, you don't need any of this. Um, and then um, that's pretty much it for now. So another thing we're going to do re uh, soon is set up the tracer to decode this command stream because right now we're not doing that and we already have the tools for that. All right, then we have the event message. So this is the please allocate memory message. And the arguments here, if I just write them out, are going to be um, message ID is C. Then we have four, which I think might be the um, VM context. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, that's the context ID. So uh, VM slot is what I call it these days equals four. And then we have unc equals one. We don't know what that is. Unc two equals zero. No, actually there's no unc two. So we have an unknown value there. And then we have an address, which is the 5080, um, which is that one. So you have that address again, the same one from the command um, Q. And by the way, um, on Apple GPUs, the vertex shader doesn't do, basically the, the GPU doesn't do the vertex fetching in hardware. Um, that is done entirely in the shader. So on Apple GPUs, you can support any vertex format you want, um, as long as you can fetch it from the vertex shader and do whatever you need with it. Um, 
So, yeah, so this is the magic event um, that asks the driver to allocate memory. And then we have the actual memory allocations here, and let's actually write out what is being allocated where, because there's a lot, in, and we don't understand why. So we're gonna have... Um, there's a whole segment there that is not in the dynamic section, which is interesting. But that might, that is actually possibly a different, um, uh, that might be a different thing that is being allocated by another GPU drop though. Um, so it's possible that that is just, um, a coincidence that is happening here because of the timing. So there's a lot of memory allocated there. And there's some stuff getting unmapped, and the thing is, I'm not sure if this is actually the related to the mesh um, shading. Because then we have this at 13.0, and that's definitely more interesting. So we're gonna take a note of this 50. Because see, they're, they're being allocated by two different CPUs, so I get the feeling that there is somehow. Um, Something different going on here. Like these ones are definitely for a different um, address space. That's not us. But I'm not sure what is up with that. That did happen in GP in um, yeah, that did happen in that context. So it might be relevant. And then we have that 13, um, and that goes all the way to. So it's a one big block of uh, memory there. And it, actually, you know what? It's, it adds up. It's actually the same size. So it's somehow allocated the same... Oh, wait. Is it possible it's the same memory? So that's the last page here. What's the last page of the other one? Okay, so it's two identically sized blocks of memory. One in the regular user memory address space and one in the special, super special shader something address space, which is this 13 thing. So that is quite interesting. Um, let me just make sure this memory is not mapped anywhere else. Um, doesn't look like it. Nope, okay. Is there any part of the graphics pipeline besides rasterization? Um, I mean, the index generation for the vertex shaders, I guess. Um, and I mean, the actual format fetching, like the, the memory um, load instruction handles a bunch of different formats, right? So you can just load your vertex, you know, and with a memory load and it will convert for you. Um, it's not like you write the conversion code in a shader in weird ways. Um, so, you know, the, the, you get to choose between a whole bunch of different formats. But if you need a different format that's not supported, you can also just do it in software. Um, but yeah, um, the Apple um, design is very software-oriented like this. Um, so the other thing that's fixed function is tiling, right? Um, so it's tile-based um, architecture and tiling is fixed function uh, and controlled by the command streams. Another thing that is fixed function is... Um, or basically fixed function is interpolation. So actually this used to be controlled by a different program um, on PowerVR GPUs. When you have the varyings, basically, um, those get configured by a program on Apple. It's actually a fixed function based on the command stream. And then the shaders just interpolate between them with a special instruction. So, um, so yes, varyings are also fixed function. And the way they get generated from the tiling phase is also fixed function, which is why we had that weird water bug in Darwinia because we were setting the varying interpolation type at the tiling stage wrong. And so it was doing linear um, shading where we were supposed to be flat shading, but only on the tiling stage. Um, so it was still flat when the triangle was small within a tile, but when it got big, it would get weird. Um, so that's some of the, that's some of the stuff we, um, when it clipped, it got weird. So. Yeah, there is some fixed function stuff. And hidden surface removal, um, kind of. 
so you can have um, draw stages um, be considered opaque, and in that case, the hardware is free to um, call and never run the fragment shader for. Uh, by the way, there's not there's no fragment shaders on Apple Silicon. There are only pixel shaders. Um, so fragment shading is also just a software loop if you need it. Um, and and that's part of what the driver does. Um, but anyway, the, the pixel shaders, um, if you have it set as an opaque surface, they can be not executed at all. But if you have discards or something like that where um, you might or might not um, render a given pixel, then there's an instruction for that. So if you, if you have that kind of situation, then the shader controls when the hardware does <clears throat> um, the depth test and um, and discarding. So um, effectively, the depth test can be controlled in, in software if that's, if that's what you want, if you are writing depth. Oh yeah, and that, that's RTK stack. So our, that RTK stack stuff is um, initialized stack memory. You see that a lot in stuff from the firm where they often have uninitialized um, padding in structures. And it gets very confusing when there's garbage data there and you think it's relevant and it's not. Um, so, yeah. Yes, you can get hardware accelerated on depth testing the middle of a pixel shader. Exactly. Basically, when you write the depth with the depth write instruction, that's when the depth test ha um, happens. And if it fails, then the rest of the pixel shader doesn't get executed. Yep, testing exactly where it needs to. It's really cool. They have some really interesting things that like no other GPU does. Um, okay, so there's our mal allocation and there is a message telling the GPU that we are done. And here we have that address again. It should be the same as this one because it's in reply to that. So we have there is address equals that and unknown equals one and then a bunch of zeros um, and message ID is 27. So, oh yeah, another thing that would be nice to test would be what happens when we run out of memory in macOS. So I might want to try to set this up so it um, maybe patch the mesh stuff to generate a lot of geometry, like way more. and. Um, and try to see what happens if we use a bunch of memory and the system runs out of memory because in principle this memory allocation can fail and I don't know what happens in that case. Honestly, this is kind of a hack. Like, mesh shaders really should be implemented in hardware. Um, but the... I think they just didn't really bother for this generation. Like, um... PowerVR didn't have them. It had geometry shaders, but they removed that because it kind of sucks. Um, and so I think they just decided they could just emulate it. Um, but in principle, it would be more efficient to actually have this be passed through directly instead of, um, writing to memory. So this is a bit of an emulation hack, but it's what we get. Okay, so then we have, um, message, then we have another compute submission. And it's interesting that this compute submission happens right after the... I mean, this, this could be or not a coincidence, but it happens right after the first one. Um, is told to continue after the allocation. Um, but before it actually gets the completion um, event. So at this point, it's um, pipelining to compute submissions. Um, it's the same command queue, so it has the same same that and then we have the work command and there's nothing interesting there but um again we have actually there's no interesting pointers here now these are all known so finalized compute again has wait it has two pointers this time Oh, okay, so that's interesting. So we had one pointer before, now we have two. I think that might be because this one is like freeing some memory or something like that. So 
let's see what we have here. Um, in finalized compute, we have two pointers that are not decoded properly yet. We'll fix that. Uh, one is FFFFFA0 um, 15. Um, oh, hold on. 15. AT zero one zero zero Did you get the number of bits there right? I think so. <clears throat> yeah, okay, that's interesting. So that's That's fun. And then the second one is um A zero four three eighty. Is that the same? Yes. Okay, so multi-sampling is, is limiting hardware to 1x, 2x, or 4x. Um, what I mean is that the um, the, the per-sample shading is also controlled in the software. So um, you can either write out all samples at once, or you can write out just one sample. And if you want to run the shader per sample, then you need to have a loop. But the cool thing about that is that um, on most other GPUs, we have... Um, I just explained this um, and some time ago. On most other GPUs, we have either per pixel shading or per um, sample shading, depending on a flag somewhere. Here, it's always per pixel shading with per sample variation. So that means that, for example, if your fragment shader does a bunch of work and then only one tiny little difference per sample, then you run all the common code first once and then your per sample part only runs the differences between them. So it's actually more efficient. Um, but the sampling positions are hardware controlled. So that is that is set um, through a command buffer setting the, the sampling um, offsets. So it's always 1x, 2x, or 4x at your arbitrary positions you can choose. Hey, Akinian! Nice to see you here! I'm doing well! And then my throat being weird. Um, so, yeah, thank you for coming! Okay, so we have, um, yes, we need to get these things sorted out, but for now, we at least know which pointers are over there. Um, so that's interesting that this finalized compute has a different, um, has two different pointers set. And then we have three pointers in the work command here. So now we have, um, interesting, 15... 80, 0, 80. Oh, that's interesting. There's something in the middle there. And then we have 15, 80, 100, which is this one. Because if this one has a 0 in the middle there, then... And then we have 80, 100, and um, 4, 3, 80 here. I'm not doing math. I'm just um, reordering these. I'm just inverting the order of these things. I'm just writing it out backwards because they're a little Indian. Um, and uh, then we have that. Then we have a flag that the previous command completed, I think. Um... That should be the one with two... No, wait, three pointers. Wait, hold on. Did both complete? Um, no, only one completed. Wait, when did the previous one complete? Oh, no, no, that's just because my dumper is dumb. and always dumps the last one out. Um, it doesn't really track them. Um, okay, so let's ignore that. And then we have another allocation message here. And that one has this is he we have like four unknown one and then we have 5080 that is the same and now for some reason we're allocating in shader memory which is quite interesting um so i wonder what that's about 
and then we are getting a little bit of shader memory. Um, and then we have two seven six. That that might be a different CPU. I'm not sure. There's, there's several things happening in parallel here, so that's a little bit tricky. Um, I think we have 275. That's a small block, and then... 788,000. And then some other stuff. There's a lot of weird allocations here that I'm not sure if they are really related to the shader call. So here's a big block. And then we have this one, which is what we expect. That is definitely related to the dynamic allocation. Um, up and sub here at 13 7 FFC, and then we have more weirdness. Um, I don't know why so much stuff is getting allocated. This is pretty confusing. Hopefully, when we start looking at the shaders, some of this will make more sense. Um, and then also, as soon as that is... See, that's unrelated because this is getting sent there. So I think that is just user space allocating something. Uh, what we probably want to do is look at some, um, like take more logs and look so at some later allocations because it shouldn't be allocating memory very often. Um... But anyway, here's the... I don't know, this is a flag message. This is a... Wait, that is... Hold on, I'm confused. Um... So this is the first compute submission. We have the message... And then all the allocations... Thirteen, and... Unknown message, then we have more allocations there. Ah, it does have the other message, okay? So the other message happens when it finishes at 062. Um, okay, yeah, so there, so there, there's the. There's the we are good message. So everything else is unrelated to that execution. So it's probably not us. And then it gets um, a 3D submission. So that unknown message has the same arguments, I think, as the first one. Yep, looks about right. Um... I'm not curious where there are... No, it shouldn't be. Um... Oh, no, there is a flag right after that. Okay, so... Right after we send that unknown message, it completes very quickly. Um... But that's not that weird, because the hypervisor is super slow, so... It's not that surprising that the GPU would complete a job really quickly. Um... So it completes, and then it does a 3D submission. So this is where it actually renders. And we are going to have a 3D submission and a vertex submission, and they are both going to have some interesting stuff. So the GPU um, 
info does not have that pointer on this one. And wait, why did we not show that? Oh, no, no, no. That 3D submission, I think, is... Not for us. I think that one's for the compositor or something. This one's probably us. Yeah, that looks more like us. Okay, so we have a 3D submission here. And it does have that special pointer in the command queue. Um... Hello. So, um, let's see, any weird pointers here? Nothing unexpected, but, um, yep, nothing at the end there. These are all things we know about, I think. Finalize compute, yep, it has something as expected. Um, so, so finalize 3D, sorry. Finalize 3D has, um, Oh, 140, that's a, an even newer... So clearly we are incrementing this here. And then this one. So there's, there's some kind of like queue going on there. Like a ring buffer or something. And then the actual structure here, um... Yep, there's stuff at the end here as expected. So we have, um... Two pointers there. One is 140, like this one. And the other one is the same as this one, then. And so we have a decode here with the actual um, render pipeline. This is not going to be interesting because it's just the 3D side. The vertex side is more interesting. Um, but however, um, make sure there's no weird uniforms. That looks fine. I think that's okay. And then we have the um TS submission. So this is the interesting one because this is gonna consume the output of that um match shader. And so we have an init buffer manager command that should not be anything new. And then we have the TA work command, um, nothing there. So on the start, we might have something interesting. Let's look at the um, commands here. Okay, so same as the other, start doesn't do anything. Finalize though has, um, yep, one of the pointers. So that one has 4380, same as the others. And then we have in the main command stream that is broken up, but in the main work command we have 4380, same as that, so... So it looks like they are basically two pointers at the end of the word commands. And the last pointer is always some common thing. There's the same for everything. And then there's some kind of, um... Like... Um... Buffer index or something like that.
Because we have... Okay, so we have this... um Unknown A0158 thing. It doesn't show up anywhere else. Um, let me search for that and just make sure. So that showed up in the compute... Um, the first compute... Output into E1. I don't know. It is. I'm oh, sorry, Noki, because that's the that's the incrementing one. So we have this common thing, and then we have the buffer, right? So the first compute submission has zero zero, and then the next one has eighty one hundred. So this one gets two buffers somehow. Um, and the this is two. Um, so the first one has 1580, um, and Finite Compute also has the common one, but no pointer. So it looks like Finite Compute always has the second value, which is in bar 3D, right? So we have, um, actually no, not for this one. It's the same, yeah. So finalized 3D, for example, has yes, the second value, and then the first one here is zero, which you can see there. Um, so it looks like um finalize okay, that's this kind of makes sense. So um I get the feeling that this second value, which is also in the finalize, is like a free operation. So it's like I have finished using this buffer. Um, or something like that. And this previous one, the 80, is probably some kind of like a lock operation. Um, so this is saying like there's going to be a free of that 100, of some information stored at that address. Um, so the, now, now the interesting thing is going to be dumping what's on these addresses when we, this command's run. Um, and then, so same here, we have um, the 3D submission. is going to say we're free something at 140, and we don't allocate anything. So... Um, and it also looks like the allocations from this pool are either 80 or 40 bytes long. And then there's one more thing. Which is that this vertex submission... Um, So 3D does that, but then TA here, right after this, if we look at the actual buffers that get sent from TA, um, here's the fun thing, there is a uniform, so the vertex shader is getting a uniform that is actually that address, and this is interesting and also Security Y is not great because that address is in kernel space, but actually is writable by the shader, which is at least dodgy. Um, so you can see it reading from its 1580.0080, which is um, what we wrote in the Compute2 submission. So that means this 00 here is the output from the first Compute submission. Um, then this 80 here is the output from the second compute submission. And then that is used by the vertex submission here. And then we also have another address here, which is 1529B80. Is that related to an allocation? Mm, not sure what that is. That could be anything. There's a vertex unknown uh, mask that gets set. That's interesting because that might be related to enabling these features here. Um, more uniforms. That's a fragment pipeline now. That's not going to be that interesting. You have a pre shader, nothing there. Um, that's the code. We'll, hope, okay, we'll also hook up the disassembler so we can see what these um, shaders are doing. Um, 
So here's the interesting one. Then we have a call. Oh, I know what this is. This is the address of the command string that is going to get patched. I'm pretty sure. 9B800, and this is 9B8058. So basically, there is a call um, that is just a dummy so that it can... Um, so the shader can write this other call instruction, and that writes a call to the um, second um, buffer that is allocated here. And that's the command stream. So these are the meshes. These are the meshlets. These are the individual draws that get generated. Um, and it's all allocated in that buffer. So the shader is going to be generating these. Okay, and I think that's the end of that. So um, the first thing we're going to do is actually fix all of these decodings. So we actually get the numbers nice and clean. Just gonna put this into a real file here in Kate. And let's actually call this something. Um So the first thing is gonna be going into my Python stuff and adding all of these fields that we don't have yet. So one thing is the command queue here. The command queue is starting at the beginning. We have unknown E8. Um, we'll call this um, allocator control address. And then we have um, we have the work commands. So TA we know has that stuff at the end. Um, those pointers always seem to go in the same order and have the same meaning. So let's make a little substructure for that. Um, Alcator control. Let's call that Alcator control. Um, Control address. Um, we'll call this in control address and then um, out control address. So one thing to keep in mind about um, GPU ISAs is that GPUs run like 32 threads at once. So they basically run everything 32 times in parallel, which means that um, the instruction decoding isn't actually that big a deal because basically it's amortized, you know, 32 times. Whereas on the CPU, you only have one thread um, executing instructions, um, you know, from the same instruction sequence. So basically instruction decode matters 32 times less in a GPU than in a CPU.
So we have this allocator control. And now let's see where we can put this. So we have um Work command compute. Work command compute at 2E1. And this is already messed up, um, but it just only happens with new from where. So we have, um, see, this is actually lined up properly. So we have the allocator control right there. And that should be 18 bytes. So we'll call this unc, um, is that plus, um, 18. So 2F9. And this is probably just petting, but, um... And then we have ad hoc control. And that's your allocator control. So then 3D should be the same as that. That's this one here. So at 98D, again, we have um, three pointers. One is there. Yep, that is lined up right, so that is correct. Um, work command 3D. 928D. That's alloc control. And that would be 18 bytes. Um, so it needs three more there. So just add the padding there. There's a weird, like, um, unaligned thing going on there. So D plus 18 is um, 23, I think. And then we have out of control. What happens if only one of the 32 threads branches, though? Yes, that is interesting. So uh, when that happens, what ends up happening is that they get masked off. And that thread is basically idle while the others execute the code that is, um, you know, that is... Relevant. So, basically, the flow control on GPUs is weird and done in different ways depending on the design. But on Apple, that's how it works. So, um, if all the threads branch, then it actually skips. But if any thread um, is still active, then it will run the code and the others will be idle. Alright, so here's our allocator control for 3D, and then we have TA, that's the last one. Um, TA has it at 5D8, and the previous one, which is it messed up, so 5D8D. Um, and again, this should be three pointers. So I think we can count that right. FFFFA0, C43800. Um, that is lined up right. Um, I think it's just there. So we just need to make sure we have that padding here. Though this padding is kind of nonsense anyway. Um... You basically need three bytes padding. Um, so the same as adding that one, 18 plus D would be 23. Um, we have three bytes padding there. Padding doesn't really matter that much. Then we have out of control there. Um, And that would actually be removed from that padding there, but the padding thing is kind of messy anyway, so let's not worry too much about that. The important part is we have the allocated control there. And now in micro sequence, we also have these other fields we need to fit in. Um, so we have the finalized compute command. Um, Finalize 
compute command. And we have this added stuff. Um, the... Finalize compute. Um, get two pointers at rank 64 and they are just there. Wait, no, that's not right. It's before that. Okay, so that needs to move here. Um, yeah, so we have free padding there. Um, wait, hold on. We have... Um, No, that's not right. Hold on. I uh, make sure I don't mess this up. So I took four bytes. So we have first um, one. Is that right? 15, 80, one. Oh, okay, one byte. So we have one weird unknown byte. There's always a slip by one byte. I don't understand it. Um, There's that one weird bite where we previously had the so this would be um we removed four bytes added one so this is the e of zero so that's ten so there's at both pointers um so we have the um 100 which is the that's the add lock in control um address that i called it what did i call it in control address and the yellow control address. And then we have one extra byte, and then that um, removes that, which means we need to pad less here. And then that, I guess, goes at the end. I think that lines up. What's on pointer 71? Hold on. Pause the flag thing. Okay, that's always been there. So that is finalized compute, finalized 3D command. We have that. Um, same thing here. That one I think is just clean. Um, yep, that one's just clean. So we have the in control address and the alloc control address. And then uh, finalize TA command, same story here. And I think it's just those. Yeah, that looks about right. So that should get us um, nice clean values there. And um, all right, so now uh, let's look at the tracer and see if we can dump some of these addresses. So there's a few things we want to do. First, I want to decode the compute um, commands. So for that, um, we have, for example, handle TA here. Um, decode VDM. We want to add that to the compute side. Um, Right here in compute info. Decode CDM. And we basically take the CI encoder thing and just pass it in here. CDM, 
decode CDM. And that should be all we need to get our compute stuff um, dumped. Um, so then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm on this branch. Um, Alyssa, next or something. There's this disassembler thing. Um, it's not there. Um, some branches have this. There's that one commit that I need. Um, it's called, it has, yeah, that's this commit, this commit. So there's a horrible hack to get the, the compiler hooked up. Um, so that'll give us the assemblies, not the compiler, the disassemblers. So that will give us the assemblies of the um, shaders, which is exactly what we want. Um, so now, um, we're going to go there and we're going to um, also add dumping of some of those values. So the finalize command looks like it always has the same numbers as whatever is here in the global. So um, in the main work command. So I think we can just dump the work command. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another function here. Um, Def dump alloc self and just take those pointers that we declared here. Um, if alloc dot out control address is not zero, um, we need um, these are all kernel side, so we can just use that. Um, I'm just going to do it like that. Copy and paste a bit. Um, out control address. Um, and we're going to jump 100 for now, even though it's not that much. Um, you get the in control address. Control. We don't know how long that is. Um, so let's just dump like 64k or something and see if that works. Um, actually, now let's see how long uh, big that mapping was. Um, So that mapping there at FA whatever um, looks like it is actually looks like three pages. So it's just about three pages there. Um, so that would be that. No, wait, wrong place. And be that. Um, then we call dump alloc on the everywhere basically. Um, so we have the command queue here. We want to call that on alloc control for workman CP. I'm just gonna do it like this. So um, if unlock is non return, makes it a bit easier. And then in TA here, magic zero, I can just say um, the decode VDM happens there. Let's put the unlock control. Just do it like that, so it's a bit easier. And um, so we have that on the TA. We do it on 3D also. Um, let's 
put it in here. That's the view I want. And then in compute, same story. Um, right before the decode, we'll dump the other controls. And, um, and then when we dump the work queue, we also want to dump the control. Um, queue info gets dumped there. Um, I can probably just do that with a with a proper address here. If I do, if I say that address is, um, and just have it as an allocator control. Um, oh, but I would need a conditional for that so it doesn't break when it doesn't have it. Um, okay, let's not do that. Well, there's probably nothing there at Q creation time that we're not going to see later anyway. Um, we can trace every write to kernel address based on the CPU, so we can see when things get written, but um, for now, let's just do it like this and see what happens. Alright, let's see if I got it right. So, guess.py, we want to run this. Yes, like that. That's from last time. Um, what trace did I use there? I used, um... Wait, did my tracer go away? Uh, yes, this, this, that's what I want, the deferred, um, tracer. And I need my keyboard, where'd my keyboard go? I keep losing my keyboard. Ah. Oh, no, that didn't work. Um, invalid syntax and command Q206. Uh, I'm missing a parenthesis somewhere. I need to run that again. No, three oh seven now. Same story. Um, 759 uh, in micro sequence. I keep forgetting my parentheses. Okay, network, and 
Wait, um, was it stack out? Because I was mesh is what I want. Um, that I guess, but... Um, I think that should work. I probably need to log in. Okay, so there's our mesh shading demo. Um, and now um, let's do a resume tracing and see if we can get a log. Oh, I forgot to dump the log out. Oh, so there's. Oh, huh, okay. Um, interesting. So it's not that big. Um, Wait. So it's just one page, but when did I get mapped? I didn't see the memory mapping. Um. Okay, so it's just one page then. Um. <clears throat> okay. Um. We'll fix that. Like that. Um. Okay, we got some stuff. So here's another message. Here's the. Um. Yeah, here's some interesting ad hoc stuff. We are not tracing mappings yet, which is why this is not showing up. Um. We do want to do something with these messages, though. We'll do that in a bit. Let's see if we get some interesting dumps. Um. Okay, here's the ad hoc stuff. Looks like they are basically just flags. Oh, and I forgot to rename this. I love control. Because it looks pretty boring. We failed. Um, wait, breed funk. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to do that in um, CDM. There's a lot of redone copy paste here. I really need to fix someday. Um, you have a deaf read in here somewhere. Um, yeah, we'll do it like that. Wait, why is out of control it? Whoa! Oh, that's... Okay, so that's not out of control then. That is actually... Interesting. Okay, so then I guess that's just, um, 10 size. So let's see if we can find anything interesting in the... I really need to write this to a log. Um, I do have a log, wait. Um, am I logging this? I'm not logging this. Um, I should log this. Let's just, let's just look back here for a sec. Um, so here's CDM. Out of control, yeah, that looks like that. And out of control just has a bunch of ones. Um, so 
It says a stream link. Um, it's pipelines about the uniforms. Um, yep, there is a uniform there with the um, address of that, similar to what we had in the vertex. Um, free shader. Why are my shaders not disassembling? Oh, is it because? Hold on. No, that is, that is built right now. Um, why are my shaders not disassembling? I do have the disassemble py here. Oh wait, no, 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 no. That's on the compiler. That's not what I want. Um. That, 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 that's what I want. Okay, let's just reboot this um, and try that again and actually get a log this time. Um, What I think we're going to do after this is enable um, tracing every read and write to GPU address space from the um, CPU, which is going to tell us when the system cares about those magic buffers. Um, and that way we'll get a better idea of the flow. Um, but first, let's look at these shaders to see what the shaders are doing. my shell history to save so I can just do that more easily that should be fine now um, so I'll now resume the tracer and run that oh wait no there's stuff there oh it's just that because yeah um, hold on Um, let's just reset the log and um, all right, and let's get a bunch of frames out. Okay, I see shader code now. That's gonna be fun to see. So let's let it render a few frames. I think that should be enough. Uh, let's stop that and... Let's look at our mesh rendering log. So, um, allocator control, there's that. Um, so that's all zeros. Um, wait, wait, that. Um, 
Oh yeah, okay, that's just that, yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so you can see some of those. Okay, so there's a counter involved, obviously. Um. So it's probably the number of allocations that happened because there's one, there's two for each, um, for each thing there. Um, so at least this looks pretty simple. Um, in control two, out of control two, yeah. Uh, looks like we basically have buffer counts of some sort. So let's see what on earth the shaders are doing. So um, if we look at the first shader here with Anna Control, um, that is a compute command, and we have um, the uniforms there. Um, that's not the funny address. Um, I think. Um, so this is a pipeline. Okay, so this one doesn't have anything. Device stored to do, that's interesting. Um, There's a nine comp bad lot, another device store to do. We're looking at a system register one. Um red position in the red group. This is a big complicated trader. Um what is that immediate? Oh just a FFF. Oh wait, this is like literally just Storing to that on thread groups. Is so it's all these device stored to do's which are interesting? Okay, look, bad alloc. Can you read that? Bad alloc. <laughs> so that that this is a um. That, that is, um, hold on, let me show you. I've seen that before. Um, so that's, I think, a deliberate fault. Um, that happens when an allocation fails or something. in decimal, I recognized it here in the instruction encoding that is in hex. Just backwards. Um, I'm not that good. I can't read like hex the deck and 32 bits. <laughs> um, so and it's interesting that that's like a high address that they use, but it's kind of random. So now I want to know how that gets called, because I don't think that's the mailbox. Um, I think that's something else, but this has to be somehow... Um, I mean, it's possible they just use page faults for this, because I'm pretty sure those are resumable, at least as far as the hardware is concerned, so... Um, oh, I bet I know what the to-do is. I bet, I bet the to-do here is, um, enable page faults. Because normally page faults are disabled on Apple Silicon. 
um, because they are used for like speculative loads and for sparse textures and stuff. So I bet the to do here is the no, actually, please page fault flag. But then this is doing a bunch of math. Um, R3, R0, R6. And this one didn't get anything passed as the as uniforms, so so that's interesting because I don't think bad adlock would be um, that, that's probably a deliberate page fault. Um, device store to do. Where do these values come from? R sixteen, R seventeen. To get some offsets at it, or 11. Um, Cause this is a really complicated shader. And it comes from the thread group somehow. I'm really bad at reading, um, shader assembly, by the way. But uh, I'm expecting some kind of magic value somewhere, and I'm not sure I'm seeing that. Unless it actually is a uniform. Um, okay, I'm gonna do one more thing first. I'm um, in command queue here. I get the feeling these um, compute unknowns might have extra stuff, so. I'm going to add some padding because I kind of expect more than just that, um... Stamp. That's not an address because it's not even aligned. Um, but that though, that kind of could be an, a kernel side address. I wonder if that's mapped anywhere. No, no. It, actually, yeah, it could kind of be that, but not. No, I don't think so. Um, this is doing device loads of uniforms. Zero, one, two, three. Those are these, which are regular buffers. That looks like it could be an allocation size or something. Because the size we allocated was... for... Um, it could be that in a, in a block count kind of way. Um, don't know what that is. So it's doing some indirect loads. Um, which means we might have extra things in these buffers. I can read some of that. Um, I don't know if the data is going to be right right now, but uh, 
Um, is that right? No. Oh, look! We have a magic address there. So there is a direction here. And that, um, 1582. Oh, that may be the most recent one. Hold on. I bet that address is somewhere. Is there a 1582? Oh, that's the out control. Okay. So we have the out control address there. And that has passed. Okay, we're gonna have to um, manually disassemble a little bit of this shader. So um, let's paste it somewhere. This copy and paste. It's a big shader. So we have that shader, and that is, um, let's look at the uniforms and get that pasted in here also. So we have the uniforms. Those are the interesting ones. Oh, wait, no, these are, um, wait, this didn't happen. Uh, that one already has out. Oh, wait, we do have some uniforms. Oh, wait, how did I miss that? Um, this has out control, but no in control. Might be looking at something else here, but hold on. Yeah, that one is unrelated, or at least doesn't have anything. Now, this is a different shader, okay? This, <clears throat> this is a different shader. That isn't doing any of the special loads and stores. Um, so why does that use out control then? Hold on. I'm confusing myself. Let me go back. Um, so when that runs, um, oh, there's a pre shader. Wait, compute has pre shaders? Oh, okay, it's a pre-shader. 
Um. Uh, okay. Uh. Ha. 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 Wait. No. No, it's not. No. No. Oh, it's a different launch. Oh. Okay. There's a stream link, and then it jumps to somewhere else. There's a stream link and there's another compute shader. And this one's the interesting one. Is <clears throat> this is the fun shader. Um, this is the interesting one. And... And the uniforms that this one ends up with... Oh, I messed up my zoom. Um, are these... So those from you know these. So we have 1502, um, 7440. Okay, there's stuff here. 40, 60, 30, 50. Okay, there's definitely pointers here to stuff. So 30 is some kind of buffer. Um, let's see what's in there. It's 150274. Okay, it starts there. Let's just get this whole bump, um, this whole section there. Um, let's get more in case. And there's more there, so that may or may not be related. Let's just get all this in here. So you want zero zero. That one doesn't look like it's that interesting. Um, okay, so what we have on this one... Is we had... Um, just... Just those. Control at C4C8000 and but this is the, this is the same thing. Um, So it doesn't have the auto control pointer, but it does have um, 
Oh, also, let's just dump the context. Um... So, at 15, not A0, 1582. So, everything is to be a writable um a zero fifteen There's one normal shader that just does a bunch of stuff. Oh no, there's the device store. Oh no, this is the next one, yeah. So there's the second shader, there's the device store to do, which looks related to that. And that is our one R22. Which comes from a bunch of... This is complicated. Um... R15, R16, making for device load from R9, R10. No offset. Um. And R9, R10. Came from U4, U5. And U4, U5 is here. So, um. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it loads from thirty. At thirty, we have fifteen, oh, two, seven, four, zero, zero, which is here. So it loads. Um, make sure I got this right. Um, U four, U five is that pointer. R nine, R ten would be this now, and then it loads from that zero into fifteen, sixteen. So it's loading. Um, that address it also loads um That one. I'm looking for fifteen sixteen. Yeah, that. Um, so then that gets added to something, and that ends up at R one twenty two. Um, and then there's a device load from that. But what I really want is the to do here. It is that though. Um So what's up with all that? I said one 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 three zero. That's interesting, the to do stuff. Um So these constants are F bats. Mm? Nah. Oh, bad size. That's bad size. Interesting.
And yeah, the names are um, things we made up. So I'm sure Apple has um, very interesting different names for these things. Um, So wait, that R324 is the value and 78 is what now? Wait, what's our 7 or 8? There, device load. Um so that is loading from 0 U6 U7, which came from um, uniform 6 and Uniform 7. Um, so starting to have say 16, so 8. So not, not that. Um. B, so 1550. So it loads, um. From that. 1582-0080. And then it does a special store to that. Um. Of the flag. Value. Um. So that looks like it's just writing a flag out. What I don't understand is, um, it kind of looks like those to do instructions do something special. But I'm not sure what. It kind of looks like this would be based on page faults, but the, the page tables are not set to fault on these addresses. So, um, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Unless the, unless somehow the, um, there's some extra flag that I haven't decoded in the page table. Um, but that all looks pretty normal. The user line side deals with the shaders. So it's bad size and bad size. And bad size. Okay, let me look at the log again, make sure. Um, okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. Um, log. Let's call this mesh two, and um, it might be because it's already allocated. Um,
Let's try resuming that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna see the mappings there. Um, let's let it render a few frames. So we're actually gonna do this, um, like this is gonna be used for geometry shaders also, but we're gonna do it a different way because um, it's very hard to support dynamic memory allocation in the Linux kernel like this. Um, so what we are actually gonna do is we're gonna have like a static memory allocation where we allocate a big buffer up front. And the idea is that um, we're gonna set it up so that eventually when we when this is finished, we're gonna set it up so that if you have multiple apps using geometry shaders and mesh shaders, they can um, like mutually exclusively use the same pool of memory. And that way we can make sure we don't, you know, blow up your memory usage with many big buffers like this. Um, but basically because of the way the Linux kernel GPU um, job management is designed, um, we can't actually allocate memory in the middle of a GPU job like this. So um, that's why I only want to get a feel for how it works today because we're actually just going to do static allocations in user space uh, for now. Um, but we want to understand how it will work when we have the sharing thing for multiple jobs so that we can actually use it like that. Um, the helper shader is not involved with this dynamic allocation stuff, by the way. Um, as far as I know. Um, okay, so that should be enough of that. Um, let's pause that and kill that. And look at the log again. Um, so there is the message. Um, do we not have the... Oh, I think we didn't do the current VA stuff. Wait, didn't we? Um... Oh, it should be there. Oh, no, I need user map. Let's try that again. Um... Resume that. Okay, so there's the thirteens. So we'll make sure to look at the shader right before that gets allocated. There's more buffers getting allocated for the... Alright, the second job did that. Um... So let's let it do at least one more frame. Okay, that should be enough of that. Um, pause. Um, pause. So 
So there's the airlock, and it starts there. Oh, interesting. Um, there's another drop there. Where's the notification, though? I think it's before that. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, let me find the event for that. Okay, there's the magic message, and then the 13s... Oh, wait. It's not there. Okay, no, it's just... Okay, it's... There's a uh, submission in the middle, so... Um, so those are pipelined. Um, but what I care about is that event message there, which is triggered by... This shader. Um... Oh, which interestingly is... Um... Stream linking somewhere. 15290C... 860 and then there's nothing there so that probably gets filled in by the shader which probably means i want to turn on redumping Oh, look, there might be, uh, there might be extra stream stuff there. Um, look at this one, 15, 7, 4, 0, 2. Oh, but I killed it already. Um, mm, I want to turn on redumping and then probably... Okay, let's, let's try that one more time. a redump probably from a previous flag um uh, let me just reset everything um user map Turn map, start, um, set the log file to match three, and, um, resume. one frame now and then stop it and inspect the um memory look at that log um mesh three and we're gonna look for the funny event message um flag event notification small flags what we want is 
that one. Okay, so that's where some allocations start. Um, right after that shader ran. There's a stream link at 1520SEO60. Is there anything there? Um... Twenty nine C C C eight. Uh, no, that's just string terminate. There's a 29C8008 there. Oh, is it a loop? Oh. Is this restarting the shader after the alloc? Then there's a 60 jump in there. Wait, so we have um some I should have be I should do something to print the offsets here. Um I don't know because it is jumping to eight. Okay, so wait, what we have here is... Okay, this is weird. This is interesting. Okay, so CDM starts at 8,000. We have a stream link. 29C8034. Which is here. It says jumping around. It jumps to that, and these are just jumps that are not calls. Um, so first thing that is, is jump to 34. Then it sets up some uniforms. And that's not what's so in here though. Um, This might be a different execution. Um, let me see what the last thing we decoded here was. That is that. Um, so at 34, we have... Oh, wait, no, it's a pipeline at 4880, sorry. Um... That is right, yes. Okay, so we have a pipeline there, um, which does uniforms and things, shared, then runs a shader, this shader. Then it um, has a pre-shader, compute launch. And then there's a link to um, 
Wait, so we have a launch compute global size 16 by by one local one by one by one um 48080 that those sizes are here um 1681 one by one by one that's the pipeline okay so we that, that's just because we decode the pipeline first compute launch and then we have um the actual launch which is an unknown of 160. And then there's a stream link to 8, so then it's jumping around. And there's a separate pipeline that has all those uniforms. And that one does the interesting stuff. And there's 32 by one by one in both sizes. Um, another unknown 160 at launch. And then a stream link to 60, which has the buck terminate. And that actually did not get written out. Um, but maybe it did get written out. And, and then get, got written again after the... After the event. that message there i'm thinking i might want to get a shell when the message happens and see what the state of thing things is during the allocation um because there's definitely interesting stuff here Look, we actually get the messages here anyway. It says that the allocation is already fulfilled, so they do nothing. Okay, let's do one more and turn on the full VA logging. At least for our kernel stuff. Oh, but I need to kill that first. So start that with current VA logging and resume. And um let it run. So now we can see what the kernel does when it handles those allocations. is there
Okay, there's one frame. Stop that and uh, look at. This one and look for the event thing. There's the event message and uh, we can see what it does. So it's um, A0 OC4F. And let's look at the um, other buffers that this used. So we have this. Um, let me put this in key right. OC for F. Um, that's not this. Oh, it's also not that. Wait. Oh, wait. This is interesting. Let's say 0, 015. Oh, that's the command queue stuff. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Those are not this. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Those are not used in the. Okay, 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 okay. So that's the global control stuff, and we forgot to dump that. Um. Right. So there's stuff there. And then there's another address that is interesting. Oh, okay. And what are the permissions on these? Um, also, I should look at dump four, because that's... Um, well, it's going to be the same, though. They all use the same pointers. Um, okay, that is not accessible by the GPU. And this has the 15 one. Which is also not accessible by the GPU. Okay, there's some stuff there. What about a zero um zero zero fifteen? Okay, that actually gets mapped later. Mm, that's sure. That almost looks like a ring buffer control 
Um, pointer. That is, that looks like a ring buffer. Okay, let's look at that um, unknown event again. Okay, so the interesting one is there are 19% in this file, and it points to a 0 oc 4 f which should be the same as the command queue thing. Yep, C4F. Is not DB writable. Um, has some numbers in there. Um, let me put these in here. That almost looks like a ring buffer offset in the pointers or something like that. Um, the hypervisor is a bare metal hypervisor. Um, so... Hmm, let's look at it. Let's look carefully through the... Um... So it, it does that, it's reading some stuff that I probably don't care about. Oh, look, 15. Aha, uh -huh, okay, so it reads that. It looks at the global there. These are stamps. And it does read... Um, no, that's just the command. Um, the event, so... So after reading that, it reads those values, then it reads some stamps. Let me open this up another thing and look at the... So here's that. Um, let me see what the stamp value was, because there was a stamp involved here in... Um, Oh, maybe not. Um, unknown 10. There's one there, yes. Um, so there's a work command unknown 10. And this is that thing with both shaders and the event after that, yes. Um, okay, so that is actually just empty. 583 is um, not those stamps. So I read some random stamps, but I don't know what they are. I think they're just stamps. Um, because this one is the stamp at... C801C. Just not being read. So I don't know what those stamps are about. That is 582. Uh, let me look at... Let me, um, Paste that um, unknown 10 thing in here. And then we have a compute command. 
Switch hairs in out like that. I think those are already pasted. Okay, those are the same as up there. Um, just put them down there to be more clear. And um, do you have an odd control? Which is mostly just one there. Um, and alloc control is zeros. So it's reading that shared area that the firmware might have written to. Um, and then what is it doing? So some stamps, then it clears out a bunch of stuff. Writing something there. I don't know if that's related. Um, that looks like it could be related. What is that? E8034. Oh, that's new. That's new, I think. Those look related. Is that any data anywhere? Okay, wait, where is that reference from? This is new. It's writing to that, which is a C47-9C0. That looks like a command buffer. Oh, and right after that. Yeah, okay. So it's writing to all that. Clears it out. Writes out an address. Put some stuff in there. What is C47? That's also new. Where is that referenced? Um, oh, this is all new. I'm I'm missing something here. Buffer manager related stuff and I'm just confusing myself. But that doesn't make a lot of sense. No, what's 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 this? What's this? This is weird. Um No, that's an event control structure, isn't it?
Yeah, that's an event control structure. Okay, so that's the event counts. It's setting up an event control structure. Um, but interestingly with like... The event counts in very different places. Like this is like a whole separate ring buffer I'm missing and now I'm scared um I guess it's because this is the uh, main queue or something it might just be that this is the main um yeah this is probably just the compositor then oh yeah look there's a different CPU processing stuff here this isn't CPU 3 okay no I think this is just the compositor Because CPU 3 is what read those funny bytes there. And oh yeah, that's oh yeah, no, no, that's that's uh, this is the compositor doing stuff. Um I guess yeah, okay, okay. This is just a normal render, the compositor is doing things there. Um okay, okay. Um now Where's the actual mapping here? Okay, there's the actual mapping. That is in CPU 3, so... I think we're just confused by the multiprocessing. Okay, so CPU 3, so it starts... Um, it basically starts mapping stuff there. And it's pretty much... Just that. And the last thing should be... Okay, there's some stuff here. Okay, 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 okay. So let's just grab for CPU 3. Which did do some... Oh, but that now it's... Now we're on different CPU. Ah, it gets so confusing! With like CPU migrations and stuff. Um... Okay, so what happens at the end of the maps? That might be easier to find. So after it finishes mapping everything... Yes. So after it finishes mapping everything, it does a bunch of things on that area. So it increments that value. Reads a bunch of stuff. And then it writes the device control message to continue. Okay, so I'm getting a feeling that this is similar to the way that buffer managers are implemented in that there's probably a list of like mesh um, buffer managers and um, and so they're probably indexed by that one that is or one of the zeros in the in the messages and um, so after the request you know there's like there's like global stuff that represents the um, like, how much is allocated in those buffers? Um, I 
Like that. Um. Actually, not that one. If a zero 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 fifteen. Yeah, so like two 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 there probably means that that buffer has two blocks allocated or something like that. Um. And that is only writing this two there, but then the the firmware might be writing the other ones. Let's see if there's anything here. Um. We can see that C4 if there is that. Um, so that it writes, um, after it gets the event flag, it writes. Um, ones there. So that's probably the requested. Um, like buffer count. And then the fulfilled would be at 8. And then, it, and because there's two buffers involved, it also increments that and then increments that one also after mapping all that stuff yeah um And we save this as Amish keeps the we'll deal with that later. Um okay, so Oh, and then it's actually decrementing some stuff. So after that, the first thing it does is initialize it. Um, then it writes one and one. Then it fulfills by just writing to the eight. Then it writes two and two. Then it fulfills her into the 8, then it reads 0 and 4, and it writes... It decrements that, somehow. And that's just reading stuff. Um, again, just reading stuff. Oh, so here's one that is not going to alloc, right? It's just going to... Yeah. So here's the case where it's already allocated, right? And it's already allocated. It will just increment the pointers. Um...
saying it's fulfilled and nothing before the resume there and then it's just going to do the increments there and then finally Actually, no, it just increments those, but doesn't decrement it. Um, oh, that's the end of it. Um, but I probably don't have enough log anyway. Uh huh. So what about C4F? Okay, uh, you know what? Let's just script for this stuff. for F or 15 Like it's initialized the C4F with that 15 thing. Um, then it reads the 15 thing. Then um, then it gets the funny message. Um, Nothing happens yet because we are pipelining some stuff. So then it adds one to that, um, does all the ad locks, increments that, then sends the unknown message, um, So it looks like all the interactions through the 15 part, um, which is not accessible by the shaders, so...
there's definitely some kind of buffer control thing, but now I want to know where, um, how the, how the buffer addresses, for example, get passed, or is it just implied by the offsets? Um, There's all the analogs at 13. And that address doesn't really go anywhere. It's like right after all those analogs, um, CPU 3. Yeah, it just writes that out in here. So that, that base address is probably implied. Um, and then when the second block goes in, it also just gets incremented there. Um, address the a6940 looks like one of the ring buffers Okay, that's one of the channel. That's the device control channel. Okay, that's why I read that because it's sending a device control. Um, okay, yeah, that's just the device control. Um, and the device control just gives it a one argument and the control address. Um, just point to that 15 thing for FOC. But it never writes to that. Which tells me this is a control structure probably for... Um, it's the same with um, like the, the Q ring buffers where these values are controlled by the firmware. And... Um, and then this is appointed to a shared region. So I bet C C4F is probably not shared. FK00C4F is normal, not shared. Okay. So, um... So this is the firmware um, analog control structure. And then 15 is going to be the pointers. Uh, let me dump a bit more here in case there's anything else interesting. No, it's just that. Um, okay, so there is the firmware structure that probably it increments and decrements things in as needed. Um, then there is a global structure with the pointers, which is pretty common. Um, that is shared, which is what we want. So that's a caching thing. That means that the firmware and the CPU share control of that structure, but not this one. This one is firmware only and probably means this gets written once it maps it it initializes it and uh, that's it there's nothing else there 
So it just initializes and passes it through as always. So th that, that pattern I've seen before many times in the firmware. So that makes sense. So it's only managing some very simple counters in that, which is good for us. And then there's those in and out structures in the command buffers. Um, so for example, there's that out of control address, but is this ever written for anything? Doesn't look like it. Um, so something writes that there, but not us because we don't have any... We don't have any... Um, any writes to that, so that means the shader is probably writing to that. So that means if we are passing in out of control like that, um, that's probably also in a shader. So that, this one gets a finalized compute with an out of control, but that one doesn't have This is a pipeline with a simple shader that isn't doing... Oh, there's a device store to do there. Oh, there's, that's the bad ad hoc shader. Okay, so there's one... Um, okay, so this is kind of interesting. There is one shader there that does stuff. How does this get the uniforms? Um, probably through these buffers. 15027400. Um... So there's the first shader that gets some pointers around, and, um... So there's the yellow control, and on the yellow control here... You know what? I'm um, going to grab it again. Because that just has a one. Because those messages um, are either deltas or. Um, Uh, looks like it's just pointing to the other thing, OFOCA0, so it's probably from that buffer. And that was the, um... From our out of control structure, um... So that would know whether it's, um, allocated yet. So it reads that. And then it reads... One, oh, I'm right to two to that, and then... Wait, did it... 
How does it know how much it's out? I guess maybe the colonel keeps track of that. Um... Because I don't see it reading any number that would tell it that it's already allocated that much. So I guess the colonel keeps track of that probably internally. Um... That's that. Um, then it comes to two, and then there's a zero. So zero's out. Um, as it's I'm not sure because I'm gripping. Okay, it zeroes out. Um, looks like when it submits this. But that might be when it considers the previous submission complete or something. Um... There's also a flag there, but that is for the previous command and I would expect it to... Oh, it's reading the... It's reading the... Um, stamps here. That might be enough to trigger it to do that. So it probably resets that when the previous operation completes or something. Um, When the next submission comes in and and sees that it doesn't need them anymore. Um sorry for not paying a lot of attention to the chat by the way. I'm just like a little bit too focused on this right now. Um see you later Alexander so So we have new structures for the managing, um, and then... So then the, the big question is, what does the shader do? The shader needs to write out to, um... The dialog control, which is C438, um, which is not here. Unless I'm confused, which I might be, um... Yeah, C438. This only has 158F. That doesn't look right. Um, that might be something else. But then again, we also, um... We also let more than one thing run, so this might be bad data. Um...
So let's look at the last thing in the log. Um, the last alloc control is C43, C, C438010. That doesn't look right. Um, Weird. What is that 18 F thing? But anyway, there is a second pointer, so 29B800. No, there's nothing there. And maybe that's how the page faults work. Like, it... it Offsets that somehow? Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to resume this, um, pause the tracer, and uh, we're going to do another run. Um, but this time, I'm going to make it pause um, whenever a compute launch happens, so we can actually inspect things. Um, so in handle CP here... And we'll compute. We're gonna let it dump everything and then just run a shell. And so then we can inspect that. Um, reload me. Um, start. Actually, no. Um, this is H first. Um, start. Um, actually, log first. Mesh five. Start. And resume. Be sure this runs. And then run that. Oh, that again. Let um, me just try stopping that. Make sure I kill that. Um, um, reload me. Run script. Start. Uh, I don't need the. Um, NBA map, user map, start. We zoom. Um, get the log file in there. Okay, so here's the shell, and this is one of the interesting shaders already. So let's see what we have now. This is the bad alloc one, so it should be responsible for allocating stuff. Um, I look at the previous log, and I search for not that, search for that. 
that gets launched and um, that's just a redump so it looks like that shader actually doesn't really um, too much but it might write to some of these buffers Here's a redump, and it gets that, and uh, then nothing much happens. And there's another uh, 3D. Um, now there's another compute shader. So there's the, this shader is doing something interesting. We don't know what. Um, so let's see if we can figure out what it's getting these addresses. So. Interesting, it's like extracting bits around. Oh, that's just the what it writes. So R1, R2. That comes from the first two uniforms. Which is here. So 1502740E0. Okay, it's the same buffer now. And now we have 1580. Okay, that looks right. So the, the actual uniform is... Also, did this launch have any of the alloc stuff? Yeah, so it had the alloc control address at um, C4 um, 3800. And then we have um, so let's stop those. Um, a a zero fifteen eighty oh one zero. At zero and I'll take that. Okay, so that's all zero right now. Um, and the way the uniform is loaded is it's loading from the first two uniforms, which is send for e zero, which is that, and it's getting fifteen eighty zero zero, and it is writing to that with a funny in instruction here. It's writing something to that. Um, Otherwise, it writes bad alloc. Okay, one second. I'm going to take a very quick break and I'll be right back. And we'll keep looking at this. Just one second.
snack, and I'm actually gonna have a little snack um, before I continue, but I'm getting the feeling that we actually had this wrong. There is no mailbox. I think what actually happens is that there is a shader in charge of calculating how much to allocate, and then the callback from the firmware to the kernel and back is just so that when the firmware actually executes a shader that requires these um, these allocations, and that's probably what those commands are here, the uh, the one with the, with the stamp um, number, that's probably thing that telling the firmware, hey, make sure you allocate whatever is in the buffers. Um, and there's some kind of index for that. And um, and that's when it sends the notification to the host. So I think what's probably happening is just that, that um, the there's a shader in charge of calculating how much to allocate, and there's a shader that actually um, uses that memory and does stuff with it and maybe allocate some more. And, um, and so basically when those, um, shaders execute, before executing, um, the firmware asks the host for the allocation. Um, and so that means that we can submit things to the GPU and we can have one calculate the required amount of space and the other shader actually use it. And, um, we don't need to block on the kernel level until the firmware tells us that it's like at that point in the command stream. Um, so that's interesting, and I think that's what's going on here, um, because we're not seeing any mailboxy type stuff. It's just a back and forth. And then I think the idea is that when the, the, um, the, the kernel always allocates in the in blocks in that area, and... Um, and then probably the firmware knows how to... So when we get those event messages, those have, um... Those come from the command queue, which is why that comes in with that address. Um... And it's literally just asking you to allocate some amount, probably, the, mm, that's probably the count. Um, the amount of, um, buffers to allocate, and the VM index is there, um, so we can identify what address space to allocate from. And I bet that um, stamp thing is so that somehow it knows what to um, write into the stamp index if the allocation fails or something like that. Um, is it unc10 compute unc? So you have 10 and 11. So 10 comes before, um, the shader that actually uses the first allocation. And 11 comes before, the shader that, um, Similar to that.
Right, so that's, it must be far the one that it actually uses it, so it'd be more like in instead of out. Um, so I got these backwards, probably. Um... So it uses 11 the second time, and what about HD Mesh? That one's always using 11 for some reason. So that one's always 10. I don't know what's the difference, the difference between 10 and 11. Oh yeah, there's an 81 there. I wonder what that... Oh, that's, that, that's some kind of flag. There's something wrote that. Oh, that's kind of fun. Um... I think the firmware writes that. I guess it's always aligned, so it can use the bottom bit as a flag, but that's interesting. Um... So we can see what's going on here at 80, uh, 1580, there's nothing there. Which means it probably is in charge of writing to that, um, to determine how much to allocate the next time around. Um... This one, let me just remind myself again, this one has out of control is C4380, out in controller are empty. So that, whatever happens has to go through C4380 or, oh no, wait, we have these here, 15880. And then we have the C4380. So when the shader runs, everything is zero. Um that it is doing a store at the end and if we look at that shader code the store at the end is um whatever it calculated to r1 r2 which is coming from the first um loading from the first uniform first uniform is e0 so um from that one 1580 so that means that after the shader runs there should be something there so let's continue execution And there is something there. There is a one. So that um, is the that's the number of blocks that it needs to allocate. Um, On this unc 2 f 9 also, which probably means it's the allocator control shader. So 
so that's still nothing. But then we have that at that address. So, um... And then, okay, so I think what's going on is that, um, one is like the alloc count, the other one is the free count, and then we have the alloc control address, which is like the counters, probably. And so it'll decide how much memory to free. And then that flag probably just gets set if it actually allocates or something like that. Um, okay, that makes some sense. So we have... Um, Oh, we, we, we can't do null pointers, I think. Um, I think it'll just crash if we do that. Um, hold on. Mm, I, I probably need an extra, like, not null thing there. Uh, let's not bother with that, but the important part is that there's that alloc control, which probably is, um, yeah, so after the allocation, it, um, that's still zero, but it knows it needs to allocate one. So who writes the alloc control? Probably the firmware? Yeah. When the allocations are fulfilled. Yeah, so when that, for example, when this one runs, it has an out control, an alloc, so it's gonna allocate one, and it's using one buffer from the input at 100. And so then what we see is that, um, oh, interesting. Okay, it wrote another thing at the output, which is probably how much it needs to allocate the next one or something like that, um, at, um, C0, and then, not, not at, yeah, C0, at 140, which is the end control there. So that's how much to free the, when the next one runs, and that is the 3D command, yes, okay, so that is how much the next command is gonna free. And you can see that it wrote that. 
Um. And it's through, through just the Brock count, so there's nothing really interesting there. Um. And out of control, um, got incremented there, and that means that the allocation probably happened in here. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So out of control is how many blocks are currently allocated. Um, it might be a start and end or something like that. Um, And then that's the 3D thing is just saying, okay, when this command completes, we're going to free two blocks. When this one completes, we're going to free... And 100, we had... One block. Um, so that means it's not actually a count. Um, it's like a pointer. So free up to the one block, then free up to the... Up to the two block. Um... So I don't know if there's more than one pointer involved here, but it doesn't look like it because otherwise I'd expect um the stuff that's somewhere else. Oh, but someone got something got rid of 40 there by the shader. Or the firmware. So there's a request and a reply somehow. And same with the free. When the thing got freed, it um a two got written there. But that's probably just the, the shader writing stuff. That would be the how much to free the next time. Um, so now that Let's take a quick look at that buffer. So the first shader we ran is the one that determined when to allocate one from there. Uh, and this is the completion point. Um, and there's nothing else there. So now we can... Um, so next shader, there's still one there. Nothing happened. And this one has... Oh, that's just the Arc 10 thing. Uh, so that doesn't do anything. Next one, though. Still nothing, but now we this should be using the allocation. So we are... Um, 158 and C438. Still nothing there. But now when we run that, it's going to allocate a bunch. And now we have uh, one block allocated the kernel is keeping track of, and the shader um, said we are um, in 80 and 100. We are going to um, allocate one more block for the next shader and free one block.
So then we have the next shader. And there's still nothing different there. But um, after that, if we let that one run, it's going to do more allocations. And we only stopped on that, so that's gonna be a bit weird now. But now we can see that it actually uh, wrote uh, to the 80 there, and the 140 it wrote a 2, so that's like the free count for the next one. So the, the um, first one is the yellow count. Oh, and I, I bet it what it writes to the second thing is the the beginning block. So the firmware probably writes that to the begin pointer um, where it actually allocated. So it's a count, and then it's, um... It's hard to tell what the shader is writing versus what the kernel is writing. Uh, not the kernel, the firmware. So if that's a free, um, no, but 140, I think it's just the, um, free count for the next one, was it? For 3D? Yeah. So that's probably written by the shader. Or, or not exactly the free count, the free up to, um, value probably. So that means that the layouts here are um, patient request, construct class, um, so the control part is just um, so that's zero now because it already freed stuff or yeah because we stopped it at the end um oh it's on 10 now oh it's still nothing though Okay, so now it's one. That's one. Um, some stuff. Got to two. And then zero, yeah. Um, so basically, we have unk count, which might be the um, start. Maybe. Um, I'm gonna guess that start offset and end offset. Um, start block, end block is my guess. Um, allocation, control, allocation, pointers, let's call that. Makes more sense. Um,
Wait, didn't I call it, um... Oh, allocator control. And then we have allocation control, um... We have allocation request and free request. Um, so free request is just going to be um, single. I think it's just going to be like a free to block thing. We have a free up to block there, um, and allocation request is, um, block count, I'm guessing, and then we need some padding, um, And now we can make it a little bit prettier. Um, now we can make this a bit prettier. Um, so, in this case, we are dumping that structure. Um, dump alloc, we can just say... Instead of hex dump, we are going to parse... Stuff manually. Just make it handle um, pointers, but um, get stream context. Um, might as well zero because we know these are kernel mode. Actually, well, we, these have to be kernel mode because the firmware touches them. Um, print allocation. Control, um, so instead of I control, it'd be alloc request address, free request address, and alloc control address. So this would be allocation request, um, And not print, I need self lock. Um, allocation control and free request. Okay, let's try running this again now. Um, pause and SSH again. Kill it. Um, reload it. Um, start. Open a new log file, mesh six, and um. Resume. Run that. I think it's gonna break. Maybe not. Ah, 
medication control is not defined because... Just didn't reload that. Um... So now we have... Out of control, start box zero, zero. Run it again. So not finished, which means... That's still zero because we are just fighting on that shader. But now the next one... Just as out of control. Wait, yeah, um... Okay, that one has an activation request. One count. Um, start block is zero right now. And start block and block and controls. And now we have... The analog request. Um... And now there's a free request. And so this should have been fulfilled. That doesn't make sense. Um, I think it, it probably just uh, printed the previous one or something. Um, oh, there's assertions there. Oh no, because I, cause I probably just control C. Um, There's extra stuff now. Oh, there's like a one at the end. Oh, because of the offset there. I need to fix that in the tracer. Uh, let's add a log here. Um, Oh, did it die or something? Oh, because the SSH died. Um...
interesting that that start block is one there, even though it's not here. I thought that was being written by the firmware. Oh, that's when I got written. Um, and the location control is um, not being updated, but I bet that's just because that's cached. Oh, that's, that's getting freed there. Um, all right, because we, we quit, so that's gone. Um, let's try burning that again. Um, what is it doing now? Oh, probably the update thing. Okay, so control zero, then we request one. And there's one of the free requests, request one, and then that. Um, didn't get the start block. Oh, I wonder if that's because of the cache, though. Or just because the, the flags thing is confused, uh, because that's pretty dumb the way it's done right now. Yeah, I think that's probably just the flags thing being confused.
Yeah, yeah, that one is global. So that's just for firmware usage and it doesn't um it doesn't affect the the, the CPU is never supposed to uh, mess with that. Um nor the GPU. And it's not even read over by the GPU. So that's just the internal control for the commands. Um so that's like it for an instance of the allocator or something like that. And So I guess when that allocation is required, it sends a message, and then the other structures are just for tracking what is the current status of the, like, backing memory, I guess? And... So we have, like, two different structures, which is a bit weird. Um... And that's kind of it, I guess. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all that's going on here. There doesn't seem to be anything else, so... So this is interesting. So the allocations that are not a mailbox, they are not um, in line. What's actually happening is that there's a shader that calculates the size and a shader that actually um, writes stuff out and calculates the size of the next allocation. So it's a chain of shaders. Um... And, and then the firmware just, um, reads whatever sizes they requested and actually forwards that to the kernel to make the allocations happen. So, um, this is pretty interesting. Um, and it's all done in big blocks, though the firmware probably doesn't care about what these requests do. Um, it's just a number. So I expect that the... We could use whatever block size we want. Um, yeah, I think that kind of makes sense. So then we can request the number of blocks, and we could probably use much finer block sizes for our allocations, um, which would make it easier to share this between different um, apps as we plan to do. So the idea is that we can actually allocate in Linux um, in the middle of a GPU drop, um, just because of the way Linux manages memory, that doesn't really work. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have like a global pool of memory that is like the maximum size we ever expect. Um, to be supported, and that can be like a module argument or maybe a setting in Mesa or something like that. But basically, we're always, we're always gonna have some kind of max memory that can be used for, um, in, in our case, geometry shaders. Um, and that's gonna be allocated up front on submission. And then the idea is that um, different jobs can request memory from these pools and. Um, let me see anything a little bit about this. Um, so I think we might actually be able to share memory between different jobs without blocking on a single thing because um, if we submit a command to the GPU, if we require that all sub allocations are part of one submission to the kernel, allocations and usages, that means that when a submission is actually sent to the GPU, Nothing can block it, which means um, any memory it allocates will be... Um, wait, but if we run two at the same time, it still need more memory. No, that doesn't work. Um, but um, at least we can make sure that the when we grant blocks of memory to a job, that we try to reuse memory that was previously used by that... Um, virtual memory space because that means we don't have to zero it out so if we're sharing this memory between different apps on the system we need to um, zero it out whenever we um give it to a different process so that means that if we have smaller blocks we can give the process um whatever blocks it already used to own in the past and then we avoid the expensive zeroing step and then i guess those uh commands the 
bit unknown 10. It's always 10 now. So it's probably a reset of the allocator or something like that. So the first shader just figures out the allocation. Then we have the young 10, which is probably please allocate. Um, or set up for allocation or something like that. And that happens at the beginning of the... Yeah, so it's probably some kind of reset. Because it happens at the beginning of the, um, the first command that allocates in any group of commands that allocate. And there's that unc 2 f 9 which is also interesting. Um, so... 2F9 flag 1 is probably related to um, whether it doesn't need to allocate or resets the allocator or something. You can see how that allocation got fulfilled there. And there's a free request there. Um, And then the next one over. Um, no, it's just TA. That's just boring TA. Yeah, and by the time that completes, that is freed up because then 3D also completes and that frees the buffers. So now the interesting thing is, um, the, there's that control stuff, um, and it'd be nice to print that too, um,
Okay, so we have the Qs. Q, C, B, Q, 3D, Q, T, A. Um, so let's put that into the dumping locks. This is um, T, A. This is 3D, I think. Um, and then we have C, P. Q, and then we can say Q command Q, get work items. Um, oh, what did I just do? Get work items. We want um, self.info. So Q.info dot whatever. That is at the end here. We call that allocator control address. Um, if we have that, um, then we want to just lock that. Um, you control at control. And we're going to have to actually write that down. We have a class. Um, Allocator key control, um, pointers, uh, well, more like yeah, pointers, address, pointers is an arrow pointer, uh, pointers address, um, uh, allocator pointers, um, not pointers, allocator, allocator, um, counts, I guess. And then we have some other stuff we don't know about. Um, so let's just do it like that for now. And then allocator counters. Would have our three counters, I think. Um, those are 32 bits each. I think we just have three like that. And then we just want to parse that. Um... So let's see if that works. Um, probably don't need to trace the other things now. Um, Why is that all TAQs? Are we not doing that first? Oh yeah, it's backwards. Um, oh, backwards. Dump airlock. Alright, this is work I am three on this one. And one, reload me. Pointer's address. And again, it's count's address. So 
we're on mesh seven, I think. Um, there's the cue control, there's the counters, we can see that. Yep, um, so that's just two are allocated, even though it says one there. Okay, let's see if we can make sense of that. Um, right, a few more times. So we go down here the key controls. Look at the beginning here. Key control. We have um, one control, and the queue says two now. Kind of always says two. Why? Now we are seeing the rights happen there. changes. That's weird. Um, is it because I am not updating things right? We are there with the counters. Um, Oh, look, take it now, it's not actually freeing anything ever. So it just always knows there's two allocated and it never calls the kernel back. Um, maybe there is some mechanism for... Oh, there's some stuff. Let's just read though. Game just reads again. device controls um there's some stuff
Oh, it's not happening anymore. Maybe there, maybe there is a mechanism for that to avoid thrashing where it just keeps it. Um, cause we have message twenty-seven there. What did we have before? That's twenty-seven. So where's the event here? So we do have those um, calls, but that's before we were... Yeah, I think there may be something interesting here. Okay, so uh, let's do another one from scratch. Um, kill that. Run it. Um, current VA. Um, current map. Start. Resume. Make sure it's actually running. Uh, get a new log file out of this. Uh, mesh 8. Then run it. Oh no, event count. I think that's just the start again. Um, ah, uh, hold on. Um, stop. Kill it, um, run the whole script again, trace, um, current map, current VA, um, start. Resume, clean the log again. Run it a few times, and uh, let's see if that makes sense now. So we have a lot of bunk tins. What about the allocation control stuff? So it starts with zeros. Then it wants to allocate one block, and we can see that happening. Um, then it wants to allocate another block and free some stuff. And you can actually see um, that the 10 is the free um, pointer there. There, so um, I wonder if that means like it's just cleared when the, that is greater than the alloc count. But then the allocation counters never change. So there it writes a one. Then it writes a two, then it after the allocations it writes a two. Um
and then it only reads at that point. Okay, I don't know why we had rights earlier, and now we don't. I'm not sure why. Maybe that heuristic only works when it's idle and like there's some timing issues here. Um, Yeah, so Mesh 4 has a dialogue there. The others... Mesh 5 does, but after that it never happened again. So I guess there is some... Um, story there for clearing that out. Unless it happens when I kill the app. I just happen when I kill the app. Let's let it run a bit more, see if I can SSH in again and kill it. Um, Be a bit hard with all the tracing. Um, we can just let it run for a while, though. It should eventually die. That's a bit... <laughs> yeah, definitely not the allocating. Yes, Metal supports Smash Shaders. Is this doing anything? I think it might be too slow to even get SSH working. Can I kill that now? If I just paste that. Okay, 
guess that is at least kind of responding, so... That might work. Oh, we got a... We, we got a... Oh, we didn't get the right... I guess we did. Okay, so we actually had it, um... Oh, it, it did clean it out. Um... Okay, yes, that's... Oh, okay. So it clears up the first one. Just like... Temporarily going away or something. So after this one, free request... Decided to pull the plug on the allocations, I guess. And then... And then it got zeroed out. And we go back. So it's kind of like the host wanting to um, unwrap that and then... And then the next dialogue request comes in. Which probably means there's another compute unk different there. Yes, there's an 11. That's probably the reset thing. So 10 is like that, and then 11 is like reset or so. Yeah, so after it sends work command 11, um, then are the events any different? Um, No, but it's just because it, um, it doesn't even send the events unless that happens. So I guess 11 is like a kind of reset where um, it tells it that it wants to... Um,
All right, that prevents that. Um, on the counters. So there's the 11, and that happens right before submitting that. It clears out the buffer. Wait, no, that's done it. Um, it's already cleared out the buffer. Here's where it clears it. And in response to what does it clear it? Um, That's the realloc there, where it allocates um, the two, the one, so the three should be here somewhere. So it writes um, to C, no, it reads from C. Okay, there's where it frees, so it's um, two, one, zero. So it's basically saying, um, So it's doing a 3D now, um, but I guess it's requesting a free, but not actually getting it until it, um, until it actually runs that, um, because it's just decorating the four pointer, which is why that's 202. zero because it's writing out zero now okay so it looks like the this is the one that does the allocation calculation. Um, yeah, the, the counter. And it looks like then after that submits, it decides to clear it out. before it submits the um, unknown 11. So um, I guess that 
once it knows that the previous commands um, that use allocations have completed, and before it submits a command that is going to require allocations, it can free the buffer, and then it'll have to use B, uh, command B to re-request allocations or something like that. Anyway, that's mostly about the subtleties of when things get freed and reallocated, so that's not um, a huge deal, I guess. Um, And 30 minutes. I think that's um that's a good point to to stop today because um I think it pretty much makes sense how this works. Um and it's not a mailbox as we originally thought, it's um just passing around the location counts, so um so that's interesting. And um yeah, I, I think we can basically use this. Um there's nothing um, causing big changes of plans, I think, here. We'll see what Edison says about this. Um, but, yeah, we, we have a pretty good idea of how it works. So, um, maybe we can call it a day a bit early today so I can uh, get some food. I actually have a snack I should eat, but, um, yeah, let's, um, I'm gonna have a little snack. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want me to explain anything of, um, about what I've been working on, or, um, you know, what we're gonna do after this. Alright, let me get a little snack. Right. Um, let me look a bit back on the questions. Ask some questions. I, I really haven't been paying attention to the chat because there's so much stuff going on. Um, did you put a buffet stream today? No. Uh, today was the mesh um shader stream. Uh, look at that thumbnail and stuff. Um, did you doing a fixed proton stream? Yes, I will do more fixed proton stuff. Um, probably once I start running this on Fedora and um 
And I need to look at the 4K best again. So, uh, yes, there will be more effects for this stuff. Uh, Mary says, morning. Hey, Mary. Sorry for, like... <laughs> Ah, being so so in the chat. Um. So yes, it's the worst shader since um, Mac OS 13, which is the one that introduced this um, mechanism. Any other questions? Anything else before I head out for the day? I see Brian's around. Will release uh, when it's ready. There's a lot of stuff that is happening right now to get everything ready. So, hopefully, um, you know, not too long, but a bit longer than the original plans. So, um, yeah, look forward to it. structures from the shaders are actually in um, globally writable memory, so you could totally just grab match shaders from one app to the other. Like, that, that is a, technically a security vulnerability. <laughs> I don't know if you can do anything super evil with it, but at the very least, you can mess up another app's um, allocations from a different one, so yeah, that's um, not super great. I wonder if those... Um, so now that we figured out that this is not a mailbox, um, I wonder if those um, to dos, I wonder if that's actually like uncached instead of um, faulting, because that would actually make sense since it needs to interact with the firmware. It needs to um, like flush immediately, and um, that could be important. The mesh shaders are not done. We, we are just working out how they work because we are going to use this mechanism eventually when we implement um, geometry shaders. So this is just so that we can understand how it works and what to expect. We are actually going to implement all this stuff we figured out today probably in months because um, the interest, basically because of the way Linux um, handles memory allocation, we can't do dynamic memory allocation like this. Um, so we are going to do like a static allocation, but we can at least kind of share that between different apps. So eventually there will be some code to um, sub-allocate from a global allocation between different apps and try to avoid things getting very bad and try to avoid using too much memory. But initially, um, all we have to do is ignore all this and just have apps, because it's going to be a maximum size anyway, uh, we can just have the driver allocate memory statically whenever it needs to use geometry shaders. And so that's the plan. But the reason why I wanted to work this out is so that we design our geometry shader code to work well with this mechanism. And it's very important that we figured out that the allocation size gets calculated ahead of time in a separate launch, because that's exactly the kind of thing we need to, do, to know to design this properly. So even if we don't use any of this yet, we want to design the Mesa driver to be able to use this eventually. So all this that I looked at today will eventually be implemented probably in months, maybe next year, because due to that limitation on Linux, it's not that useful, um, but it is partially useful. So eventually we'll implement it. Um, more importantly, what we want to make sure is that when we implement geometry shaders without this now, soon, um, that we do it in a way that will work with this in the future. So that's why I was looking at this today. So now I have to talk to Alyssa and tell her, um, tell her what I found out. 
and she can make sure to design the shaders in a way that works with that. Now, th this is for mesh shaders, um, and we're gonna need the same kind of mechanism for geometry shaders. The thing is, it's not that Linux doesn't use this, it's that Linux can't use this. The Linux is designed differently from macOS, and it's designed in a way that we can't do dynamic memory allocations like this in the middle of a GPU job. It's a, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's, it's just related to, like, um, basically we can deadlock if we try to do this, uh, because if the system is running out of memory, it needs to wait for GPU jobs to complete. If a GPU job is trying to allocate memory, there's no way to guarantee that it will actually get that allocation. So basically there's, you know, there's like a, a deadlock situation there. So it's not allowed for Linux to allocate memory in the middle of a GPU job. So because of that, we have to allocate ahead of time, which makes this kind of pointless, but only kind of pointless because um, we can still use this mechanism to share memory between different um, apps. And only one app can use the memory at a time. However, we can at least avoid... So here's the thing, when you share memory between apps, you need to clear it out when you switch between apps, right? Because otherwise it'd be a security problem. And so what we can do with this is we can at least defer the clearing out. So we will allocate the memory ahead of time. Only one app can use it at once. But as long as... In total, the apps are only using a sum of memory that fits in this big buffer. We never have to clear anything. We can just reuse the same memory blocks for every app. So that's why this mechanism makes sense for us. But because of all these limitations of the way Linux handles GPU stuff, um, it's only useful in sort of that corner case, right? When you have more than one app running at once using geometry shaders, uh, which we want to make sure is not super slow, but... Um, you know, we, we do want to um, support eventually. So the first version is just going to allocate memory for every app, which means if you're using, you know, like 16 apps using geometry shaders at once, you're probably going to run out of memory. Um, but it will still work for games that usually, you know, the game is a single app using geometry shaders. So in practice, it'll be good enough. And then eventually we'll implement this mechanism so we can avoid bloating the memory usage of the system uh, in these cases. And that's when we're going to need all this stuff. And then we'll have a system where if any app is using geometry traders, there's a fixed amount of memory that is consumed, but only once, not multiple times. Uh, when I say mailbox, I mean uh, like a communication mechanism that interrupts a shader somehow, uh, which we thought might exist originally, but turns out, nope. So yeah, it's kind of a weird thing where like, this is a lot less useful in Linux than it is in macOS, but we still want to use it eventually, you know, months from now. And to make sure we can do that, we need to design things now so it will eventually work like that. Which is why I wanted to uh, figure this out now. So now we know how mesh shaders work on, um, on macOS, or at least how the memory allocation magic works. And yeah, all the games that worked in the previous streams are not using geometry shaders. So, for example, Blender uses geometry shaders and doesn't work right now for this reason. And more modern games will use geometry shaders. So, we support OpenGL 3.1 right now. To support OpenGL 3.2, we need this. So, any game that requires 3.2, um, well, no, any game that uses geometry shaders that requires 3.2 won't work right now. Um, and then eventually we also have tessellation and mesh stuff that is probably also going to depend on this mechanism so this is going to be used for several things but um but yeah right now we we just want to make sure we know how it works all right if there are no other questions thank you everyone for coming i hope you have a, um, had a good time um i'll see you all next week with um more, we'll figure out what, maybe more bug fixing or something. 
Uh, no, it's not because metal doesn't support geometry shaders. Metal doesn't support geometry shaders uh, because, well, I mean, the GPU doesn't support them. Um, and Apple didn't implement any kind of emulation for that. Geometry shaders are kind of not great. Um, but, you know, it doesn't support mesh shaders either, right? So this is all software. Um, and they use this buffer thing to emulate them, right? So we can use the same mechanism to emulate geometry shaders. Uh, we just need to to understand how it works. So we can make geometry shaders work on Apple GPUs. Um, there's different ways of doing that, but it has to be emulated in shaders. And that requires buffer memory, which is why this whole thing is important. Our goal is basically to support all the modern OpenTL and Vulkan features on, on these GPUs. So we have to implement geometry shaders and, you know, the tessellation stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and, and yeah, when, once you get to, you know, this kind of level of, um, feature that is not supported in the hardware and we have to emulate it, it gets pretty interesting with the shaders. All right, thank you everyone for coming. If there are no other questions, I will see you all next time. See you next week, um, on Wednesday. Um, sorry for missing Wednesday this week. It was weird. Um, so we'll have, um... Another stream on Wednesday next week and on Friday, hopefully. Although the Friday one might be a little bit late. Um, and um, there's also a collab coming up. If you have heard about that in the past, uh, that was going to be this weekend. It's moved to next weekend, but um, you'll you'll get an announcement about it um, pretty soon. So watch out on my VT social, my Mastodon, and my Twitter uh, for that because it's going to be a really fun collab um, next weekend. So. Yeah, look forward to that. Alright, thank you everyone. I'll see you all next time.